Hello all, welcome to the Security Cube GNU Debugger Expert course and certification. In this video, we will look at how to break an iPhone application using GDB. Now, if you need the slides, the application, and all of that, you can either tweet this video or you can register for the SGDE for just $1.50 and get high quality video downloads, mock exam, the certification exam and finally an e-copy of the certificate if you pass the exam. Okay, so uh, iPhone applications traditionally you know have been just as vulnerable to piracy as desktop applications have. Now a lot of developers do common checks in, you know for things like jailbreaking uh, simply because you can only pirate and use iOS applications if you have a jailbroken iPhone. Now let me give you an example about what I mean. Now, I have created an application uh, using the iOS SDK and you know their entire framework and all of that stuff. It's a simple application and all it does is it checks if the iPhone is jailbroken so I click am I pirated this is running in the iOS simulator inside Xcode which is their IDE and it says the phone is not jailbroken now I have a jailbroken application in here uh, let me kind of open it up here is my jailbroken iPhone and when I go ahead and run the same demonstrations if you notice is the same application but on a real phone and I click on am I pirated uh, it clearly says that this phone is jailbroken pirates right now what we really want is to use GDB somehow and to disable the jailbreaking check or to break the jailbreaking check right you know once you can do that through GDB you can apply some sort of a patch to the application uh, to permanently disable it right so let's get started now a lot of the stuff which I'm actually going to be talking about here uh, is based on the security tube iOS security expert course and certification which we've just launched now uh, this talks in depth about iOS application auditing and the iOS platform security and if you're interested I would highly recommend that you can go ahead and check out securitytube-training.com and sign up for this course so I'll probably be picking up a lot of uh, you know bits of knowledge here and there which may be new to you if you've probably never looked at iOS applications before so please bear with me and second uh, if you do not own an iPhone or an iOS device which is jailbroken you unfortunately cannot run this demo as well in which case again you can have a look at the video demo and get a feel for how this is done okay now what I've done is I've connected my jailbroken iPhone uh, to my Mac right and I've created what is really called a USB MUX based tunnel through which I can connect to my phone so let me go ahead connect to my phone which I already have and basically all I'm doing is just SSHing into the phone right using USB MUX T let me figure out all the applications which are running on the phone at this point and if you notice this is where my anti-piracy demo.app is running with process ID 3410 fantastic now to begin analyzing this I need to have some idea about the class files so I'm going to go ahead to the application directories and I'm going to go ahead and find the one where my anti-piracy demo application is stored which is this one and here I am right and I'm going to use class dump Z to dump all the class information now if you're interested as I said shamelessly uh, the security tube iOS security expert talks about all of this stuff uh, in great detail okay so what I really want is application delegate this is the protocol 
part if you notice down below I am interested in basically the interface here it is and I can clearly see we have a view controller view controller class is of type anti piracy view controller and inside this view controllers implementation I have a UI label called piracy verdict I think that's the place where we do the printing and there seems to be a method called is jailbroken which returns a boolean fantastic right so this is what we are going to use let me open up another SSH terminal SSH into my phone again now I'm going to use GDB and attach to my process which is the jailbroken test application oops I think I'm going to have to find that again gdp p 3410 here you go I'm attaching to it this takes a bit of time okay awesome now based upon what we've uncovered in the class information what I really want is to set a breakpoint whenever the is jailbroken function is being called right so here is how I'm going to do it I'm going to take the anti-piracy view controller I'm going to say break this is basically class method so I'm going to use a minus and then is jailbroken there you go I have my breakpoint set let me continue running the application so here is how my application is running and now I'm going to click am I pirated once again and once that happens the is jailbroken method is going to be called and we're going to hit the breakpoint there you go I've run it the app is frozen in between and we've hit the breakpoint let me do a quick disassembly so make this screen font a little bit smaller so we can see more data here it is hmm now again all of this is based on what I've taught in the course and really it's not possible for me to condense uh, a six to seven hour course inside a short video like this one but basically all the message passing which is you know the specific class method etc being called uh, is all encapsulated inside the object C message sends right okay now there are two ways to do it one is where you can hook up to all the object C message sends uh, and then figure out the different arguments and figure out the one which we are interested in and the other way really uh, is to go ahead and basically hook into the place where is jailbroken returns so if I do a BT uh, if you notice anti-piracy view controller check piracy is what in turn is calling is jailbroken and that's the place where we can hook in as well right so let's try and do it both ways uh, so first let's go ahead and find out the place where we are doing the check for is jailbroken right you have to ensure that the application is always in the foreground and that you know the phone is is never really going into the sleep mode okay now let me go ahead and disassemble and now we're going to set breakpoints for each of these object C message sends right let me take this one up here let me set the breakpoint for the next one now the reason why you do not want to set a general breakpoint for object C message send uh, is really because you know you could have each of these methods in turn calling other methods and stuff like that and this whole thing could just explode if you tap in to object C message send rather it's much easier to tap in exactly to the place where object C message send is being invoked. Uh, inside is jailbroken right unless you really want to kind of go deeper and see what else is happening okay so we got the one at 68 and here is the final one 
there you go let's continue running the application we've hit the first breakpoint breakpoint 2 here uh, now it's an interesting way by which we can look at uh, what's there so this is basically not too interesting to us we are looking at the different methods being called alloc is basically just memory allocation so we can skip this breakpoint now we have hit breakpoint 3 again init with format is basically a method in objective c to kind of initialize uh, things like strings nss string and all of that let's continue default manager again not too useful aha file exists at path this is interesting because this is checking for a specific file uh, whether it exists or not on the phone right and if you've done a little bit of research on you know how jailbreaking tests work a lot of times they try to check for specific files which may ex only exist if the phone is jailbroken right now what we want to do is look at the argument of file exists at path to know which file it is checking for and always remember the phone needs to be uh, you know running and the application needs to be in the foreground the way in which you can find that is basically by printing out the object PO is specially for objective C based uh, you know applications where PO is print object dollar R2 and basically this is checking for private var lib apt now if you remember we said iPhone is basically you know an arm based application uh, sorry an arm based uh, system and hence the return value of any method or anything is going to be in R0 right similar to what we've seen in the previous video inside uh, Ubuntu RMLE sorry Debian RMLE so now I'm going to go back here to this breakpoint which is 384 which is exactly this place in here and I'm going to set a breakpoint for the next statement right and just continue we hit breakpoint 6 now if I do info registers at this point what I would find is the value of R0 is set to 1 right which means the file exists that path seems to be returning a boolean true now what we really want to do is make the return value set to false so that file exists that path basically says no the file doesn't exist so we're going to do that very easily by setting r0 to the value 0 do a quick info registers to verify that yes we've set it to 0 and now what we can do is we can continue running the program so have a look at screen at this point right and if you notice now it says the phone is not jailbroken fantastic right so this is how using runtime manipulation and figuring out the return values from different methods being called we can change what happens in the application now uh, let me actually go ahead and you know do it the second way uh, at this point so let's actually exit this application and attach to it once again right so the app seems to be still running and if you kind of remember based on what we had seen uh, check piracy seemed to be the place which we were now interested in right because check piracy in turn was calling is jailbroken when we did BT so I'm going to set a breakpoint for anti-piracy view controller check piracy that's the place we are interested in so I'm going to set a breakpoint here check piracy there we go set the breakpoint now because check piracy basically has an argument uh, we actually use little colon here right now what we're going to do is continue running it go to the phone and I'm going to click on am I jailbroken again or am I pirated again right freezes the check is still happening the output you see the phone is not jailbroken is really from the previous one which we just did now let me do a disassemble and if you notice we have a bunch of things happening here 
Now, what I really want is this time on, let me go ahead and allow it to run as is so that we get that this phone is jailbroken as error. So let me continue. And if you notice, it says this phone is jailbroken, right? Now let me click Am I Pirated again. I've clicked it. We hit the breakpoint. Now let's do our magic. <laughs> so what we really want to find is the point where check piracy is in turn going to call is jailbroken. So at this time, the method name we are interested in is in is jailbroken, right? Now let's tap into the objective C methods and calls here. So this is the first place. Let's take this one. Let me add a breakpoint here. Let me locate the second place. Uh, seems to be pretty much only one place. Fantastic. Let me continue running. You've hit the breakpoint. And if I do an x slash s dollar r1, if you notice, this is exactly the place where we are sending a message to anti piracy view controller is jailbroken, right? Which means the return value R0 is what we are in interested in. So let's set a breakpoint for the next statement. Continue, we hit the breakpoint, info registers, and is jailbroken, of course, would return a one based on, you know, the file check which we saw previously. A file exists at path or whatever that was. If you kind of recall from uh, what we'd seen previously here, file exists at path. Okay, so all I'm going to do is set the return value from anti piracy view controller is jailbroken to zero once again. So set dollar r zero equals zero. Right? And I'm going to hit continue and you can keep looking at the screen. There you go. Now it says the phone is not shale broken, right? Fantastic. So this is how using GDB, you can do all of these interesting things. The next level, of course, to figure out the appropriate place where, uh, you know, the different checks or comparisons are happening and to probably go ahead and change those, patch those out. Uh, you could do a ton of interesting things. Now, I know probably this specific video has been a little a uh, bit difficult to follow uh, simply because a lot of background knowledge was required. Uh, if you're interested, check out Security Tube iOS Security Expert. I talk about all of these things, class dump, uh, looking at, you know, the return values, uh, the different methods, how iOS applications are composed and a bunch of other things there. Have a look and see if this is something you would like to take up. Okay, so if you want the anti-piracy demo iOS app, the slides and a bunch of other things, please tweet or register for the SGDE. Now note, you require at least an iOS device running 5.1.1 or greater, even 6.0.1, the latest iOS would do, uh, but your device would have to be jailbroken so that you can load my application, right? That's all for this video. Thank you.